In this tutorial, we'll explore the creation and manipulation of polygon and B-spline masks. We'll start by creating a new composition. Select the loader button on the toolbar and browse to the tutorial footage standing folder. Click on the file you find here and display it in one of the display views. Alternatively, just drag the entire folder that contains the footage to your flow and the footage will load. This is a 10 frame sequence, so set your global end to 10. This will make it easier to see your current frame time. When you press play, you'll see that it's a simple shot of a character standing up. Make sure you're at frame 0. Set the display view to fit and give yourself some space to work. Our intention is to make this character's face scarier, and we'll do this by taking a Brightness Contrast tool or the BC button in the toolbar and click and drag it into the display view, automatically adding the Brightness Contrast into the flow and connecting it to our loader. Let's take the contrast up on the Brightness Contrast tool and reduce the gain ever so slightly. I've used the values of 0.54, from the contrast and 0.92 in the gain. Feel free to define your own look. Our next step is to add a mask so the mask only surrounds the face of our character. Click on the polygon mask button in the toolbar and this automatically adds the polygon mask to the brightness contrast tool and connects it to the effect mask input. It's denoted by a blue triangle. A toolbar appears down the left side of the display view. This toolbar appears whenever a polygon mask is selected. Right click and select the icon size and the button style that you'll be comfortable using. I selected icons and text labels and I'm viewing them at the smallest size. We'll start in click append mode. Click append mode means that I can just click once and each time I click I add a new segment or a new point with the segment connected to it, which defines the shape of my mask. When I click on the last point, and you'll see that the mode changes from click append to insert and modify. Insert and modify allows me to insert new points or modify existing ones. So in this case, I'll insert a new point, which will give me a better representation of the shape of the cheekbone. Now that I've created the shape, I'm ready to start smoothing it or making it more closely match the shape of the face that we're rotoscoping. When we created the shape, we added key points defining that shape. When you select those key points, you'll see the yellow handles. These yellow handles represent the smoothness or linearity of the shape from one point to the next. If you click on the Smooth button, you can smooth those segments so that the curve between the two points is no longer a linear shape. You can also select multiple points and smooth them in a single pass. This is also available on the keyboard by selecting Shift S or simply click on the Smooth button. Once the outside of the polygon mask matches the shape of the face, switch to the timeline and open up the polygon entry in the timeline bar. You'll note that a keyframe has been added to the polygon spline. This keyframe represents the shape of the spline using all the various points. This one keyframe in the chain of the spline represents the position of every point in the mask so far. If we change our current frame to 10 and adjust the position of the mask to fit her face, again, you can see that we automatically add a new keyframe to the mask. All we have to do is adjust a few points to better match our shape again. Let's move back a few keyframes. Use the square brackets on the keyboard to adjust your current time bar forwards and backwards one frame at a time. As I move back in time, we'll see that the mask's shape is linearly interpolating between 0 and 10. We can also see that the motion over the mask should not be linear, 
we need to add points in order to refine the movement. Move to frame 5. Select all the points and adjust the position of the mask again so the mask fits nicely over the face. Now we can see the motion is matched between 0 and 5. Between 5 and 10, there's still a little refinement that needs to be done. Change frames to frame 8 and reposition the mask and check to see if you have a decent match. Our match looks pretty good. Check out the shape without your controls being displayed by turning off the show controls on the toolbar. You can see that a small amount of softness wouldn't hurt so bring up your softness on your mask until the shape blends nice and smooth with the rest of the face. Note that these changes do not affect the polygon mask animation. Unlike masking tools that you may find in editing software, Fusion's masking tools can define all parameters independently, giving you total control of the masking process. Now, re-enable the show controls, then select the done mode from the toolbar across the side of the view, or use shift plus n. This will change the display of the polygons from Insert and Modify to Done. This prevents additional changes from being made. Change back to the flow by either using the F5 key on your keyboard or clicking on the Flow button tab. For our next example, right click in an empty area on the flow, select Add Tool, Mask, B Spline, and view it in the left or right display view. Start clicking to add points. Similar to a Bezier curve of a polygon mask, the B-spline curve is entered in click append mode, which means each time we click, we add a new segment to the shape. Unlike a Bezier curve of a polygon mask, we can see these shapes are automatically smoothed instead of linear. We can also see that our points do not define the edge of the boundary of the shape, but rather they define a bounding box. By selecting any of the individual points, we can adjust it to move the position by holding down the W key and dragging and clicking the mouse left or right, we can adjust the tension of the B-spline shape. B-splines are very popular for rotoscoping organic shapes. For example, in the case of our character, we can easily have positioned these points so they line up with the edges of the face. Then use the W key in order to adjust the smoothness tension of the B-spline shape until we have something that very closely resembles what we're looking for. Again, a little softness would do the trick here. A really convenient feature of the masking is that you can convert a polygon mask into a B-spline mask. Select the polygon tool then right click in the display view, select Polygon 1, Polyline from the menu, and then find Bezier to B-spline in the menu that appears. Click once and Fusion will automatically convert the Bezier curve into a B-spline curve. Additionally, Fusion will preserve the animation, so the animation you've applied so far is not lost when you do the conversion. This concludes our basic tutorial for polygon and B-spline masks. Our next tutorial will include some advanced features of the polygon and B-spline masks. As always, for the most up-to-date descriptions and details on Fusion, visit manual.vfxpedia.com.